The Honda Civic has always been a more interesting choice for buyers in the focus-sized family hatchback segment. This completely new version is the 10th generation model and has 40 years of heritage to build upon. There's a more spacious, dynamic looking body, stronger standards of safety and media connectivity, and perhaps most importantly, two completely fresh petrol engines. It all sounds quite promising. Okay, three things you need to know about the 10th generation Honda Civic when it comes to the on the road experience. First, the mainstream petrol engines are at last bang up to date. Second, the suspension's much more sophisticated. And third, the body it's bolted to is vastly stiffer and more rigid in a bid to create the kind of refinement and drive dynamics you'd expect in a much larger car. A promising set of headlines then. Let's scratch a little below the surface. Now we have to start with the engines because they are so different to what went before. Now most buyers will be choosing between a couple of VTEC turbo power plants, uh, a three-cylinder one-litre engine developing 129 PS and the four-cylinder 1.5 litre 182 PS variant that we're trying here. Now both are a big improvement on the normally aspirated units that they replace. Uh, they're responsive and efficient with the base engine managing a competitive 58.9 MPG on the combined cycle and 110 grams per kilometre of CO2. You'll be offered a CVT auto gearbox as an option, but we'd want to stay with the lovely snickety precision of a standard six-speed stick shift. As for engine alternatives, well, the 120 PS ID.Tec 1.6 litre diesel unit used in the previous generation model has been carried over to this one with only minor changes. Also pretty much unchanged is the two litre petrol unit uh, used in the flagship Type R hot hatch, although it now puts out 320 PS. You don't really need Type R style power though to really enjoy driving this car, thanks to a much stiffer body this time around that improves traction and body control. Uh, that more rigid structure also plays its part in contributing to the big car feel we referenced earlier, something further emphasized by the more sophisticated multi-link rear suspension set up, and that allows this model to cruise over potholes that its direct predecessors would have crashed through. Check out the on-paper stats of this 10th generation Civic and you'll find that in almost every respect it's conformed at last to conventional family hatchback expectations. Every respect that is except one and you're looking at it. The styling, just about the only part of this car created in Japan rather than Europe, remains unique, divisive and charismatic. Time to take a seat behind the wheel where there's far more conformity to class convention than there was outside. Although not to the point that you'd feel you were sitting in anything other than a Honda. Gone are the unusual split level instruments and the driver focused asymmetrical fascia. Instead, you now view a relatively conventionally styled instrument binnacle through this grippy three spoke wheel. Although closer inspection reveals that the middle dial is actually a TFT LCD screen flanked by stylized digital temperature and fuel gauges. Anything this can't tell you will be covered off by this seven inch center dash infotainment screen. It comes complete with Garmin satellite navigation, internet browsing capability, a reversing camera, Apple CarPlay and Android auto phone mirroring connectivity and a DAB audio system with at least eight speakers. Time to take a seat in the rear. Uh, there's 45 millimeters more room for your knees and a full 95 millimeters more space for your legs. As a result, there's probably more room back here than in any other focus segment contender bar Skoda's Octavia. So let's finish by taking a look in the boot where first impressions are good. Uh, the tailgate's light to lift and it opens to reveal a large aperture that's complemented by a usefully low sill height. Uh, the sloping rear glazing slightly reduces loading height this time around. Uh, it's now down to 770 millimeters, but despite that, total load capacity measures in at an impressive 478 liters in most models. Ultimately, what's important about this 10th generation Civic is the way it shows how Honda has changed. This is now a brand able to continually develop cars people might really want to buy, as opposed to models that many of them would merely find technically intriguing, and a company able to understand the wants and needs of people beyond its home shores. Both the mainstream VTEC turbo petrol engines more than make the grade, and it's been a long time since we've been able to say that about a Civic. 
There's a lot else we've been impressed with too. The huge boot, a brilliantly slick manual gearbox and the sheer uncompromising purpose of the top Type R hot hatch variant. True, interior quality isn't quite a match for best-in-class rivals, but the cabin's now a lot easier to like and it's a lot bigger inside than it used to be. Plus, of course, this car's built in Britain, for what that's worth. In short, this model at long last has come of age. Finally, a car with sense on its side, yet one that retains at least a little of the kind of Honda charisma that every Civic ought to have. It makes its segment a more interesting place.